everyone, it's Nicole from KenHub, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the veins of the vertebral column. The vertebral column is a structure made up of 33 vertebrae, which are joined by a complex system of ligaments. It provides structure for the body and protects the spinal cord. First of all, in this tutorial, let's just briefly look at some of the key features of the vertebrae in order to have a general idea where the veins of the vertebrae are located in this tutorial. So, a single vertebra can be divided mainly into the body, the transverse process, and the spinous process, where the spinous process faces posteriorly. This foramen in the middle is called the vertebral foramen, which forms the vertebral canal through which the spinal cord passes. And each vertebra is supported by a cartilaginous intervertebral disc, which acts like a cushion to absorb any mechanical stress exerted onto the vertebral column. So now that we've gone over the key anatomy features of the vertebra, let's now start looking at the venous drainage of the vertebral column. So as we all know, the vertebral column is drained by venous plexuses, which are otherwise known as a network of veins. The venous plexuses, which drain the vertebral column, are formed by the spinal veins along the vertebral column, both inside and outside the vertebral canal. And these plexuses are appropriately named the internal and external vertebral venous plexuses. Let's first have a look at the internal vertebral venous plexus, which is also known as the epidural venous plexus. This illustration that we're looking at shows the lateral view of the vertebral column, which has been cut along the sagittal axis. The internal vertebral venous plexus is divided into the anterior and posterior vertebral plexus, which is found within the vertebral canal. The anterior and posterior vertebral plexuses communicate with the external vertebral plexus, which we'll talk about later in the video. Radicular veins and the basi vertebral veins will join the internal vertebral venous plexuses and drain the vertebral column. Here we see the anterior internal venous plexus highlighted in green, and you can see that it lies on the posterior surfaces of the vertebral bodies within the vertebral foramen. And this ligament that you can see on the image is the posterior longitudinal ligament that holds the vertebrae. The posterior internal vertebral venous plexus is found on either side of the midline in front of the vertebral arches, and anastomoses with the posterior external plexus. And the anterior and posterior internal venous plexuses communicate with each other through a complex network of venous branches. So moving on to the external vertebral venous plexus, which as you can see, communicates with the internal vertebral venous plexuses through the intervertebral foramina. The external vertebral venous plexus also divides into the anterior and posterior external vertebral venous plexuses, it surrounds the vertebral column and in addition, it will form several connections with the azygous, the lumbar and the deep cervical veins. All right, here we can see the anterior external vertebral venous plexus, which lies along the front of the body of the vertebra. And it communicates with the basi vertebral veins seen here within the vertebral body and the intervertebral veins. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.